I would now like to invite representatives to lay wreaths on behalf of those who we are remembering today. Thank you. I would now like to welcome our cadre, Reverend Ian Bullock, to his first service here at Hotwood Hall. He's going to share a few words with us now. Thank you. Good morning. All locomotion should cease, so that in perfect stillness, the thoughts of everyone may be concentrated on reverent remembrance of the glorious dead. This was the proclamation issued by King George V on the 7th of November 1919 after a letter that had been published in the London Evening News in May by Edward George Honey had proposed a respectful silence to remember those who had given their lives in the First World War was brought to his attention. 100 years on, that proclamation, that act of solemn remembrance continues, not just for those who fought and paid the ultimate price in World War I, but for every man and woman since that time who has died in the service of our country. We remember the fallen, the injured, and those who are in, our co those who are in countries right now still fighting to bring an end to conflict. There are many people who would suggest to us that Remembrance Day is outdated, that it's a religious observance, observation that should no longer be practiced, that the time for remembering the sacrifices made in wars long since past is no more, and that we should instead get on with other things. Some even suggest that Remembrance Day glorifies war and encourages people to think that it is acceptable and that to die fighting for one's country is a good thing. And so they say, don't do this, don't remember, instead do something else. Speak about the horror of war and proclaim that God is against all violence against all forms of man's inhumanity against man. But this misses the point of Remembrance Day. It's misguided thinking. Misguided because it equates the act of remembering the sacrifices made in the past by soldiers of our country with the glorification of war and suffering. Misguided because it considers honouring the memory of those who have died with honouring the memory of the kind of actions they found themselves having to do in the midst of a struggle that, in the end, none of them really wanted to be part of, but believed that they must be part of it if others were to live in the freedom and the peace that God wants us all to have. The spirit that underlies Remembrance Day is probably best found in the poem that is most associated with it, the poem in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still gravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Remembrance Day is not just a time to mourn, to remember those who died. Still less is it a time to say that war is good or honourable. Rather, it's a time when we recall those who gave of themselves for us 
to remember just why it is they did what they did. A time to remember the horror of war and vow to ourselves never again. A time to take up the torch and to dedicate ourselves anew to living in such a way that we do not break faith with those who died, those who brought peace to the world. And a time to commit ourselves once again to the struggle against evil, the struggle against the very things that led to war in the first place. The men and women who are still fighting today will no doubt be looking for ways to bring an end to the continually senseless bloodshed, an end to sacrifice and loss of life that could be prevented. Let our commitment be to continue to build on the hope that was given to us by the sacrifice of those who laid down their lives for our country. Let us leave it a better place for our having been here. Our National Day of Remembrance isn't just about one war. We also recall all those in our forces who are currently serving. And we give grateful thanks for all those women and men who have paid the ultimate price in the pursuit of peace. Let the words we hear each year continue to ring in our ears. For your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us always continue to pay them honour and respect as we pray for the fulfilment of their hope. A day when peace will reign. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died from the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatred of humanity. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. For all who bear the burden on the privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us a grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to have two minutes silence.